One of the most exciting events in this big city of ours is an opening night of a Broadway play. One of the most exciting premieres I can recall was Grand Hotel. It had been written in German by the novelist Vicky Baum and translated by William A. Drake. Herman Shumlin was the producer and director. And in bringing Grand Hotel to the stage, he used a technique almost like that of the films in its rapidity of movement. Now, let me wander back for a moment to the subject of first night thrills. The celebrities in the audience always cause excitement just by being there. In all my experience, Marlena Dietrich has been the most noticeable first nighter. She doesn't do anything purposely to attract attention. She doesn't talk loudly or wear eccentric clothes. She attracts attention simply because she is who she is, a glamorous and beautiful woman and a notable screen star. She also is an actress, which all screen stars aren't. She reached stardom on the stage in Max Reinhardt's theater in Berlin long before she ever made a movie. It seems to me to be fitting that we have brought Miss Dietrich and Grand Hotel together for this performance. For Grand Hotel, a drama about a glamorous woman was first produced by Reinhardt in Berlin. Our scene is, of course, the Grand Hotel. Its lobby, its phone booths, its luxurious suites. Hello? Hello, Madame Murzinska has made speaking. No, Madame will not go to the performance tonight. She will not dance. She is crying. She is tired. She says she is going to stay here in the hotel. I, I don't know what to do. Hello, this is Blanchin speaking. No, I can't come. I'm sorry. I've got to stay here at the hotel and take dictation. Oh, I couldn't say that over the telephone. Hello? Yes, this is Kringleine. No, no, no. I'm never coming back to Fredersdorf. Never. The specialist says I can't live much longer. I've left my job. I've cashed all my policies. I have all my money with me. I'm going to stay here at Grand Hotel. I want to get something out of life. Hello? Baron von Geigen speaking. Oh, now look. I've got to have money. I've made the acquaintance of her manager, Vita. He has the room next to Krasinskaya. But I have to have money. I have to pay my hotel bill. Send me money. Look. Hey, what can I do for you, sir? Pardon me, but I am thoroughly dissatisfied. Oh? What is wrong? I'm thoroughly dissatisfied, you hear? With my room. Five ninety-nine. What is your name, sir? My name is Kringela. Yes. Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Kringelein. We haven't any other room vacant. Perhaps but later... you must understand, I can't wait. I'm a sick man. I've cashed all my policies. I can pay. But I have no time. Every day counts. Every hour, every minute. I came here because I want to live here two weeks or three. I'll pay. I'll pay whatever you ask. Clark, can you tell me if Madame Grusinskaya's car has been ordered? No, Mr. Witte. Madame Grusinskaya did not want her car to be ordered. Clark, I'm talking to you. Please pay attention to me. I'm sick. I'm tired. Oh, Clerk. And uh, I want a better room. Really, Clerk, why don't you give the gentleman another room if it means so much to him, if he's ill? At present, it is quite impossible, Mr. Vita. Well, then, see here, you can have my room. Eh? Oh, I couldn't take your room from you, sir. Oh, I'm doing myself a favor. It's a great nuisance for Madame Grusinskaya's manager to be in the room next to her. Clerk, I'll change rooms with this gentleman. Oh, no, Mr. Vita, don't do that. Of course I will. Sir, my name is Vita. I am Kringelein from Fredastorf. Mr. Kringelein, let me present a fellow guest, Baron von Geiger. Baron? I'm very happy to know you, Mr. Kringelein. And I'm very happy to let you have my room. You can make the change, clerk? Uh, yes, sir, if you wish it. I'm very great. Not at all. I'll go up and pack. Well, Mr. Kringelein, how will you feel about having the room next to Madame Grzynskaya? Oh, I, I'm overwhelmed. She is the ballet dancer who has her picture in all the illustrated papers. The same. Madame Grzynskaya, the celebrated dancer and the owner of the Sergei Pearl. And I shall be her neighbor. Oh, perhaps I ought to go and pack to Baron. Good. And when you've finished, meet me here in the lobby. We'll have a cocktail together. What? Oh, do you mean we'll have a, a drink together? Exactly. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> I won't be long. Ah. Uh, 
Now then. Uh, Baron von Geigen, your chauffeur mm. is looking for you. Just over there by the park. Oh, thank you very much. Baron von Geigen? Oh, oh, there you are. Well, Baron? Cigarette out of your mouth when you speak to me. You're supposed to be my chauffeur. How many times must I tell you? You're giving us away. Well, where's the money? Here's a hundred. But I've got to have more money. It costs like the devil to live here. Finish the job, then you get more money. You've had plenty already. We know how that goes. Always money. We want results. I can't rush it. I send her orchids. You send her orchids. That's the idea. You're after her pearls, not her affections. <laughs> have you seen her? No. Beautiful, huh? If it were my own choice, I'd rather have her than the pearls. No, but forget it. What have you done? Anything practical? I made friends with the manager, Vita. I had hoped he'd get me into a room, but he's changed rooms at the last minute to some funny provincial. Now I've got to get on good terms with him. That'll take time. Tomorrow night she'll be leaving. All right, I'll, I'll do it tonight then. How? I don't know. I'll have to make friends very fast with that man who's taking the room next to hers. I'll have to get into his room somehow, and somehow from his room to hers. But I'll do it. I'll do it tonight. Madame Rusinskaya's room. Oh, one moment, please. Madame, the steward asks if the car shall be brought. No, Anna. But it is time if Madame wishes to rehearse before I the performance. Don't, you no, know, I don't want you tonight. But Madame, you... no. Hello. Thank you. No. Later. Yes, I will tell you at the right time. Oh, oh. Oh, excuse me, Madame. Yes. Oh, flowers for Madame. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, orchids again, madame. And no cars. Again, no cars. Isn't it fascinating, madame, the mystery? There are no mysteries left, Anna. But, madame, an unknown man who sends you orchids who sits in the theater night after night applauding. Don't you wonder who he is? Yes, I wonder. Sometimes I wonder. So do I. You need someone to love you. And nobody does anymore? Is that what you're saying? Oh, Nobody loves Gruzinskaya anymore? Is that it? Oh, no, madame. This young man who sends the orchids. No, Anna, he sends orchids. He's nice to dream about. But it is only a dream. If I ever meet him, the dream will be shattered. He will not be young. He will not be handsome. I know these men who worship from afar. Oh, uh, uh, come in. Well, madame. Oh, Vita. Madame, why are you in negligee an hour before the performance? Uh, madame has a touch of stage fright this evening. Stage fright? I, Rosinskaya, with stage fright? Really, Anna. Well, then quickly get dressed. Let us get to the theater. I'm not going to dance tonight. You were at the performance last night. You know there was no applause, Vita. Madame, they did applaud. You're only overwrought. You've been this way before, madame, and things have turned out all right. They will not turn out all right now. Everything is threadbare now. Nothing means anything to me anymore. Not even the pearls. Pearls given to you by an arch. You see what I think of oh, them. Oh, no, madame, don't throw them. Oh, madame. Take them, Anna. Yes, madame. See, I, I put them in the drawer for you. Leave them there. They mean nothing to me any longer. There will be other pearls, madame, and you will certainly have a great success tonight. I shall have no success tonight, nor tomorrow. I'll never again have any success. No, this is the end. I'm going to retire from the stage. You're cancelling the performance? Yes. You want me to tear up the contract? What else is there to do? Madame! Madame, I should hate to do this. Remember that night in Paris when we had that great audience, when they stood up for you as they came in, when they applauded and cheered and stamped their feet as you finished and would not let you go? That was a long time ago. One year ago, madame. It makes me sad to think that you might have another such triumph tonight and that you're throwing it away. I will never have another such triumph. Not if you make me tear up the contract. What makes you think that tonight could be like that night in Paris? I've had words in the theater. It's sold out. There's been a line in front of the box office since 6 o'clock. Really? Really. A great crowd. A full house? A full house. The Crown Prince made reservations. Two foreign ministers. Max Reinhardt is bringing a couple of American millionaires. And now shall an understudy take your place? Understudy? Yes. I shall dance, Vicky. Wait for me in the lobby. Order the car. I'll be ready in ten minutes.
Bartender? Yes, sir. I have your vermouth pastries right here, Baron von Geigen. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry there's not a table for you. Oh, never mind. I'll find a seat. Ah, mademoiselle. May I light your cigarette? Oh, thank you. I believe we've met. Yes, at the carnival. <laughs> You needn't try to work that old game on me. Hmm? I'm just a stenographer. I take dictation. You never hired me. And you know very well that you never saw me before. <laughs> very well, no more fooling then. But may I sit down? <laughs> of course. As a matter of fact, nobody would ever take you for somebody else. You're so exceedingly yourself. Oh. Uh, would you like to dance? Well, you certainly lose no time. I can't now. I'm waiting for someone. Oh. Um... Later in the evening, I can. Oh, later in the evening, I can't. It's too bad. But will you tell us your name? They call me Flemchen. My name is Christine Flam. Flemchen? Charming. I say, shall we meet here tomorrow in the afternoon? Here? Here. On a bright. On a bright. Baron for Geigen. Oh, Mr. Kringlein, good evening. I thought you were never coming. This is Flemchen. How do you do, Miss Flemchen? How do you do? Sit down, Mr. Kringlein. Well, and how is your new room, Mr. Kringlein? Oh, it's a marvelous room. Bed, carpet, furniture. I'm glad you got what you wanted. I certainly have. Well, Mr. Kringlein, what do you say we make a really big night of it? Would you like that? Yes, indeed. And Flumption comes along, too, don't you, Flumption? No, worse luck. I've been engaged for the evening. Oh, can a person just engage you for the evening? Yes, to take dictation. A uh, Mr. Pryzen. Mr. Pryzen? Of course, it would be pricing. That's just like him. Do you know him? Do I know him? <laughs> Do I know him? I know him through and through. I'd give a good deal to settle my accounts with him. Ah, there you are, Miss Flam. I am ready for you now. I beg your pardon, Mr. Pricing, but I have the honor... I don't believe I know you, sir. I worked in your plant, Mr. Pricing. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I have engaged this young lady to take dictation. Come along, Miss Flam. Of course, Mr. Pryzen. Goodbye, gentlemen. But, uh, but... I'll see you both later. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down, Kringlein. Don't feel bad. Always the way. Mm -hmm. Men like Pryzen, they exist just to take all the pleasure out of the lives of men like me. I hate him. Don't worry about it, Mr. Kringlein. You'll see Flamchen again. Come, let's have a drink together. Very well. And then... I have an idea, Mr. Kringlein. You want to enjoy life. Well, I've spent many years learning nothing whatsoever except how to enjoy life. I can give you some instructions. Instructions? Yes. I know the girls of this city. I know the cafes. I can tell you what clothes to get, what flowers and perfumes to give the ladies, what wines to order. Oh, everything. Oh, I would be very grateful. Well, come, Kringlein. We'll have that drink, and then we'll go to your room, and your instruction will begin. To my room? Yes, it'll be easy to talk there. Besides, I want to see this fine new room of yours. Oh, yes, of course. I want you to see it. Good. We'll go there, then. Beautiful room, huh, Baron? Beautiful. Distinction. Mm-hmm. Velvet upholstery, silk bedspread, A number one. Mm -hmm. I'm in the textile business, I know. Very nice, Mr. Kringlein. And think of it, you're right next door to the celebrated Krasinski. Oh, I think of that all the time. <laughs> this, look, <laughs> this door. That one? You sure? Oh, yes, I asked Mr. Peter. He pointed it out to me. Just. The thickness of that little door separates me from Madame Krusinskaya. I wonder if she's in there now. No, 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 no. Let's get down to business. First, have you any evening clothes? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, that's the first thing you must buy. Oh, yes, Baron. Tomorrow I'll take you to a tailor and have you fitted out. But meanwhile, you've got to get to the barber's. Yes, that's it. The barber's. Right now. For a shave. Where? At this time of the night? In the basement. Here's your coat. Now, on your way, Kringlein. And you'll have to hurry if we're to take in the big town tonight. Well, all right, all right. Fine. Now then. Just the thickness of that little door. Oh, hang it. Ah, this one. Thank you. 
so bad. But, madame, leaving in the middle of a You saw what happened. Somebody hit. You heard it? And me, Grozinska, yeah. But, madame, it's terrible. An understudy taking you off. Oh, place. Anna. Please, madame. Leave you... me, Anna. Go to your room. Very well, madame. <laughs> but if you I want... will not want you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm finished. What will I do? What next? What next? I'm finished. I don't think you're finished, madame. Now, please don't be frightened. Who are you? I'm a great admirer of you. What do you want here? Nothing. Only to be here in your room. How dare you? Madame, will you please listen to me? I told you I'm an admirer. I've been following your troupe all over Europe. I've watched you perform every night. I've applauded. Are you the one who sends the orchids? It gave me great pleasure to send them to you, madame. Then the dream is not settled. What dream, madame? Oh, never mind. You've been having a dream about the man who sends you the orchids? About me, madame? Perhaps. Well, I've been dreaming too, madame. I've dreamed for days and days that I'd be here, in this room, with you. That I'd stand here and confess to you. Confess? That you sent the orchid? Confess that I love you, madame. <laughs> You're very quick. Speak of love. You don't believe me? You have been here five minutes? I've been watching you for two months. You're quite bold, aren't you? Quite. You do whatever you please, don't you? Whatever I please. You feel like walking into a lady's room, and you walk in. Yes. And if the lady feels like putting you out... She should do whatever she pleases, madame. Oh, <laughs> then, then you're leaving. You haven't said so. You're such a wonderfully impertinent man. <laughs> I love to hear you laugh. You do? Yes. I've seen you dance, and when you dance, you're so, so remote and unapproachable. And a few moments ago, you were crying, and then you touched my heart. And now, you laugh. And I know everything's all right. You mean I'm perhaps approachable now? I only hope so, madame. Because I do love you. Really? You seem to be serious. You seem to mean it. I do. Oh, you're so appealing. So soft, so fragile. I feel like taking you in my arms and not letting anything more happen to you ever. Even if these things aren't true, it is good for a woman to hear them. But they are true. Tell me, what kind of a person are you? How can I tell you? <laughs> I'm from another world. Hmm? Another world. What do you mean? In the Imperial Ballet, we build like soldiers and children in schools. No rest, no leisure, no stopping ever. Just the constant drive towards the fame they taught us to want. Well, you achieved fame, certainly. They didn't tell us that whoever is famous is alone. They never told me that I would be just a symbol of success. To be driven round and round the world. Many people would give a great deal for your kind of success, madame. They do not know what it means to hold on to success. Five years, ten years, fifteen years. Do you understand me? Oh, how could you understand? But I do understand, believe me. And that's why you're going to let me help you, madame. No. I think you must go now. You know I'm not going. You were in despair before I came, weren't you? <laughs> yes, black despair. Well, I shan't let you be alone. You should leave now. That is the safest thing for both of us. Oh, you've had safety. You've been protected by your maid, by your manager. You've been protected from the things you need. And are you... One of the things I need? Yes. And what can I offer you? Love. Devotion. I, I can't forget your tears, madame. You tell me to leave. I myself have a reason for leaving that you don't know about. But I'll not go. I'll stay here and comfort you, madame. Yes. For a moment, I want you to. Good morning, darling. Good morning, Lisa. Oh, my love. Such 
the glory of morning. <laughs> and it's so wonderful. A new day. Yes, my sweet. It is wonderful. Well, I lay awake for hours thinking of you. You see, I know scarcely anything about you. <laughs> I don't even know your full name. My full name? Felix Amadeus and Venuti Freiherr von Geiger. <laughs> All that for you. For real? Then how do you live, Felix? What kind of a person are you? Oh, there's not much to be said about me. I'm a prodigal son, the black sheep of a white flock. I'm a mauvais sujet, and I shall die in the <laughs> Really? Really? <laughs> I have a bit of character. I'm a gambler. By all rights, I belong in jail. <laughs> but I run at large, happy as a pig, enjoying all of life. And what do. else do you do? Oh, I'm also a criminal. A hotel thief. <laughs> and what else? Perhaps a murderer? Perhaps, yes. <laughs> I even came here prepared for that last night. You see this revolver? You make that too. Please, look at me. Yes, that's it. Tom, you must... Believe that I love you. You must believe me. I do. You see, my darling, I have here your purse. What? Please remember that I love you. My purse. I took them before you came here last night. You took them? Yes. You came here just to do that? Yes, Mr. Vettel. And then you spoke to me of love? I meant it when I spoke that way. You could do those things and you are thief. You said love. You said comfort. Mr. Vettel, please. I will not call to you. I will not even take the pearls. You may have them. I don't want them. They're yours. Let me pay you with these pearls for the comforting words you spoke to me last night. Lizabetta, you must listen to me. I love you. You love me. You said so. I did this thing because I was desperately in need of a large sum of money. But now everything's changed. And it changed you last night, didn't it? Yes. Yes, my life changed last night. Well, let's cling to that, Lizabetta. Oh, I love you. You believe that, don't you? If I didn't believe that now, I would die. Oh, you won't die, darling. You live more gloriously than ever. Oh, everything will be all right. I believe you. I believe you. Oh. Hello? Who? Oh, oh, Anna. Oh, good you, that you told me. I'm all right, yes. Yes, in a few minutes. Felix, it's beginning. What, Mr. Vetter? I must go to rehearsal. I must dance. There must be a performance. But today, I want to. All of it. Shall I see you soon again? Anna will be here any minute. When are you leaving the city? Very early tomorrow morning. For Brussels? Yes. Can't, can't you come along? Don't you think it would be better for both of us? No, not right away. Later. Why not? I have no money. I must get some first. I'll give you what you need. Oh. No, it can't be done that way. Of course it can. No, don't you see, Mr. Vetter, there's no way... No, this is no way for us to start out together. I've got to provide for myself. Admit it, Mr. Vetter. If I didn't, what would you think later? But I want you to come with me now. I will go with it. I'll get the money. I have a whole day. What time does the train leave? 6.27 in the morning. I'll be on the train. Oh, my love. Oh, I shall dance and you will be with me. And then, one day, you will come to me at Lake Como. I have a little house at Tremesto. We will be there in that house. And the church bells in the village will chime for us. And the little wavelets at Lake Como will laugh for us all day long. We will be insanely happy and then. And then you will go with me to South America. Do you know Rio? Oh, dear. Anna? Yes, yes, I know it's time. In a minute, in a minute. Now I must go. I'll see you later. But you will come with me, you know? I'll go with you, whatever happens. Oh, I love you. I'll be on that train. I'll get that money. Felix, don't do anything foolish. I'm alarmed about you. Don't be. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, Felix. Until this evening. Mm -hmm.